Let's hear it for Dave Hughes. Hello. We've got a lot to say tonight. You've got to remember this, though. This is on behalf of everyone in the room. If anyone in this room discovers tomorrow you've got COVID, everyone else in this room needs you to have two strepsils and shut the fuck up, all right? Because so, we are not having a super spreader event tonight. Now, if you are offended by anything I say and you're a celebrity, I give you permission to come up here and Will Smith me. Chris Rock sold out his world tour the day after Will Smith slapped him at the Academy Awards. If Russell Crowe's in the room, Rusty, you can come up here and punch me in the dick if you want to. I've had enough, kids. I want to sell some tickets. Come in, mate. Sorry for trying to start the show on time. I'm an, we're assholes like that. It's a two-can trip, I know that, yep. Good on you for turning up at all. It's great to have you here, buddy. Oh, he loves me. Yeah, he loves me. Now, that, that doesn't always mean sell out shows for me, though. I was at the... Uh, actually, I was at the... Uh, look, this is the other day. Melbourne Comedy Festival, at the front of my venue. And some bloke goes, Husey, I love you. What are you doing here? I said, the comedy festival's on. He goes, oh, yeah? Who are you going to see? <laughs> Myself, dickhead. I'm a quality comedian. I do great shows, yes. My wife doesn't even come and see me anymore. <laughs> the other night I was bragging a bit. I said, you know, people are saying my show's amazing. And she goes, people are nice, aren't they? <laughs> Maybe they're honest, Jamal. No, my kids give me nothing. Walking down the street, the other day with my 10-year-old daughter. Some like goes, Yuzi, I love you. She goes, Dad, he doesn't know you. <laughs> he knows enough. Anyone wants a photo? I'm your man. I don't care. Let's get a photo. Don't make it weird, though. Guy got a photo with me the other day. He goes, well, it wasn't with me. I said, and he goes, no, just on your own. I'm like, on my own. <laughs> what sort of pose do you want me to do, mate? <laughs> Thinking about target catalogs. He goes, yeah, no, can you, can you look angry? <laughs> oh, I can, but why? He said, I just want you to look angry. I said, oh. And he goes, can you put your finger up to the camera? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I suppose. He goes, go on, give it the real bird. So I'm like, he's going, Ugh. I said, why am I doing this? He said, I'm going to send it to my mate. He hates you. <laughs> Asshole, don't clap that shit. Thank you, it's great to be here. No, you're a great crowd, never forget that. I've never been more pumped up. This is the night of my life. We're going to have the best time, I know we are, and good on us. Good on everyone for getting out and about. Good on you. And yeah, look, I mean, I, I've been a bit... I, I look, who, who's had COVID in the room? Whoa, we're party animals, aren't we? You other losers don't know how to live. <laughs> I hadn't had it till a couple of weeks ago. I'd gone through two years, a million PCRs, four million rats. I had a bloody... I had a bit of a cold on a Sunday, I had a sold out show to do that night. And my wife's going, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. She said, you've got the COVID, don't you? I said, I don't think so. She said, you've got to do a rat. I don't want to do a rat. <laughs> Can you get me one that's broken? No, she didn't. She got me one that worked and it was popping. It was glowing. Hadn't been a, it had to been a bloody pregnancy test. I was about to become Octomom. I was COVID as, and I got no sympathy off my family because they'd all had it. They'd all had it and all recovered from it. And I didn't give them, I was, my 10 year old daughter started coughing one day a few weeks ago. I had a gig to do that night. And I'm going, oh God, she's cough, cough, cough. I'm going, oh, I hope she's taken up smoking. <laughs> she had it, she had the COVID, but she got over it as the rest of the family did. And my wife accused me of minimizing it. She said, you don't care about it at all. And then when I got it, she was celebrating. She was going, it'll be ironic if it kills you, won't it? <laughs> Well, that will be ironic, honey, yeah. But it won't kill me. Well, anyway, good luck to everyone in the room, all right? We're all great. We're great people, you know? And we've, been, we've had great people in charge of the conditions. <laughs> I still feel sorry for Gladys. Who feels sorry for Gladys? <laughs> Poor bloody Gladys was doing her best. She was popular as well. Then she, one day she said, I've got to resign. I'm like, why? And then she said, because of a bloke called Daryl. <laughs> Like a bloke called Daryl makes you resign? <laughs> I thought, geez, he must be a look at this Daryl. Then I saw a photo of him, oh my God. He must have a massive wagga wagga, that guy. <laughs> uh, 
It is great to be here and I am pumped up. And we're going to go to places we don't normally go. I don't normally go. Who watches? I'm on TV a bit. Who watches The Masked Singer? <laughs> this is recorded for Channel 10. I think we can do better than that. Who watches The Masked Singer? Ah, oh, what a great bloody show it is. If you haven't seen it, it's, I'm on a guessing panel with Jackie O, Danny Minogue, Ursula Carlson. We had Lindsay Lohan on it originally. If Lindsay came from overseas to be on The Masked Singer. <laughs> Good night, come, where'd you come from, guys? <laughs> from the pub, right? Fair enough, too. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty hard to be at the pub, but the gig's on all the time. Um, you're gonna find somewhere to sit. <laughs> <laughs> I think they, was, they thought they were coming to see Kid Leroy. Uh, <laughs> there you go, old bloke, you bloody clapped it. Good on you. Um, no, anyway, The Masked Singer, you watch The Masked Singer. It's a great TV show where singers, often who they need work, they get masks on and they sing. And I'm on a guessing panel and we have to guess who they are. And then they take their masks off and sometimes we have to keep guessing who they are. <laughs> When Lindsay Lohan started on the show, when it first started, she was like, she was told there's going to be these heaps of international celebrities. And like, I remember one night she said, I think it's Bruno Mars. And my main job was just to encourage her guessing. And I said, it probably is. He just won seven Grammys. He's got $400 million in the bank. This was always going to be his next move. <laughs> That's what I said out loud. What my brain was thinking is, Lindsay, we spent our budget on you. That's not Bruno Mars. I love Channel 10. I was on Celebrity Gogglebox a few weeks ago. Who saw that? Yeah, we go. Celebrity Gogglebox. You don't know what that is. That's a show where you watch people watching TV. And that's one of the biggest hits on TV. I did the show with my wife and, uh, and my, two, my two daughters. My son didn't want to do it because he's too cool for me now. But my daughters agreed to do it. They're nine and ten years old. And they, but after five minutes, they crapped it. We don't want to be here anymore. Oh, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Watching TV, eating snacks. It's like being down a salt mine, isn't it? We know our rights. You're not a male Clooney. Shut up. Smile, 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 smile. Australia needs to know we're a happy fucking family. I support all their stuff. I do. Best thing about the pandemic was their ballet concerts were cancelled for two years. They had one the other day, though, and I went along. They locked the doors. You can't get out. My nine-year-old daughter was crying all the way through afterwards. I said, what was wrong? She said, I made a mistake. I said, who cares? No one noticed. The whole thing looks like a mistake. <laughs> I'm actually nervous about that bit. Uh, <laughs> no, they were great people. And my wife's great as well. You know, she's a beautiful woman. If you've seen, has anyone seen my wife? Anyone seen what she looks like? Yep. She's very attractive. Yep. To this day, we're 20 years down the track, but still to this day, when people see her, they can't work out how I got her. They just can't. You're on Celebrity Gogglebox, got 100 comments straight away. Too good for you, batting above your average. She's like, you're not. Have you taken her hostage? Why didn't you include her guide dog in the photos? <laughs> That's not funny. I'll cop that bullshit from strangers when your own children start it. Seriously, I was walking down the street the other day with the whole family walking the dogs, and my son said, Mum, you don't have to worry about Dad cheating on you. No one else finds him attractive. <laughs> I said, mate, I could prove you wrong tomorrow. And maybe I will. I'll cheat on her just to prove you wrong. And maybe we'll break up and I'll find another wife and, and reverse my vasectomy and have eight more kids. How's your inheritance going to look then, dickhead? <laughs> he can't even handle us even hugging. The other day, she hugged me in the kitchen. He goes, get a room. I said, guess what? We've got a whole house. You own fuck all. We could do it here. We could do it anywhere. We don't, though. We do it in the bedroom late at night. Once the kids are asleep. They've always got to be asleep. Got to be asleep. Got to be asleep. Because we have to have the, the door open. Apparently, we've got an open door policy. So the kids always feel safe. I'm like, honey, if they see what's going on in here, they're not going to feel safe. I'm gonna... She keeps it so quiet, though, so quiet, so quiet. Sometimes I'm like, it's a bit, are you still alive? 
But if you ever, if they ever do hear noise, they start bloody running down the corridor like they're security guards. I remember one night we must have been in the middle of it making too much noise. <laughs> My son starts running down the corridor like he's Usain Bolt of the Olympics. He's sprinting towards us, he's yelling out, there's some really weird noise going on in there. The noise is freaking me out. We haven't got time to uncouple. I'm yelling, get away from the noise, run the other way. Never run towards danger. He said, Dad, but the noise, it's freaking me out. I said, you walk through that door and the noise is gonna be a distant memory. You'll see something that means you never sleep again. He said, Dad, I'm coming in. I said, you come in here, I won't come anywhere, will I? Guys, you're an amazing crowd. Who's ready for a massive night? Are we up for it?